Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to cover some bars featured in the first season of Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content, guys. We're starting things off with Champ Sports Pub. No, 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 give me the burger, and you know what? I want the nachos too. Wow. <laughs> Champ Sports Bar is owned by Joe Handy, a former teacher. The bar was the first sports bar in Burbank when it launched in 1983. Handy is a huge sports lover which is reflected in the name and the branding of his bar. The bar initially had a steady flow of customers and made profits every month. Eventually, Handy lost interest and handed the business over to Helen, his wife. To appeal to a younger clientele, the owners employed a younger workforce. But that didn't really help the bar as much as it should have. The place was only six months away from closing down when Taffer came to give them some much needed help. With some of the most well-known film and TV studios just a few blocks away from the bar, it should have been bustling with young patrons. But that wasn't the case at all. Upon reaching the location, the first thing you'll probably notice is how outdated the bar is. Taffer later brings in Chef Brian for recon. He notices several television sets playing different sporting events but there wasn't even one beer list on display. What makes it even worse is that the bartenders had no idea how to properly serve a drink. Bartender Rachel suggests ordering the only dish that the kitchen can't ruin, which is a classic burger. Chef Brian also places an order for nachos after he was advised to stay away from the cheesesteak. Finally, when the food arrived, the burger was awful and the nachos were disgusting. He also noticed that the patties were frozen and the bartenders were overpouring drinks. It's no wonder that the bar was making no money. Adding to their woes, growing competition from nearby bars only made matters worse. There was a lot that needed to be changed, so Taffer called on two specialists for help. He got a mixologist with 22 years of experience named Tobin Ellis and a pro chef named Brian Hill. I brought in two great experts to help me with chance. A killer mixologist, one of the best in Las Vegas. And of course, Chef Brian Hill, my buddy, will whip the kitchen together. According to Ellis, the bar had some major problems with cleaning. The poor spouts were sticky and he found flies all over the sink. Things weren't any better in the kitchen though. There was so much grease to the point that it even leaked over the serving trays, posing a serious health risk. When it came to the management, Helen would assign everyone's daily tasks over email. I email them all the time and I go, God, is anybody going to just stop and take the time to clean? So are you ignoring her? But apart from that, there wasn't any structure or order at the bar. While aboard Taffer stepped back, Chef Brian and Ellis collaborated to develop a new menu for the bar. Despite all the improvements, Handy didn't show any excitement. And so, Taffer invites the couple to another sports bar to show them what champs should really be like. After the remodeling of the bar, the interior looked incredible. There was enough room in the cooler to store supplies and a new trivia game system that was installed for customers to play with. The bar was relaunched with the same name and it was an instant hit with the patrons. More than a decade after the rescue, Champ Sports Bar is still open and taking orders to this day. The restaurant has an average number of reviews on Yelp and is rated at 3.5 stars. Sports trivia, which is played on enormous television screens and the bar's happy hour are very popular features. The cost of the food is pretty high, but that's typical for the area considering we're talking about Burbank here. Moving on to the next entry being Canyon Inn. Hey, yeah. I told you, I'm down 30% and I think I know everything. The Californian pub The Canyon Inn was owned by a former minor league baseball player named Polly Ambris. The general manager Johnny describes Ambris as an alpha male and a thug. The pub started off pretty well in 2004, but after Ambris refused to modernize and keep up with the times, the business started to decline. Ambris was a headstrong boss and never paid any heed to Johnny's suggestions for an upgrade. Ambrose was also hesitant to engage in any kind of promotional events to bump up the sales. The bar undoubtedly had a very cliquish vibe. Regular customers never made new ones feel welcome. Given that Yorba Linda is a relatively wealthy community, the bar should ideally succeed with a welcoming environment. When Taffer and Nicole later begin their investigation, Nicole discovers that the pub had two pool tables which could be moved to make room for a dance floor. Nicole herself decides to check out the bar. She orders a round of shots and a Stella Art Toys. While waiting for her drink, she notices that the bar serves shots in disposable plastic cups. How cheap. I thought were disposable glasses, but when I held it up to drink it, I noticed in the light there were lip marks on it. They're reusing them. When Nicole later requests for a cup of soup, the staff inform her that the soup isn't very good and that she shouldn't order it. Miss? Yeah, what kind of soup do you guys have? Uh, I get 
get something else besides our soup. Yeah. Hi. I don't think any of them are good. Oh, okay. Nicole was also bothered by a customer who wanted to kiss her. And that's when this happened. Way cuter than the other one that was in there. If I wasn't in there doing my reconnaissance for John, I probably would have punched the guy in the mouth. Then this guy was like all over me. Kiss me. <laughs> no, that's okay. This guy is a regular at their bar, and now it all is coming together. I just, I just said, I'm out of here. I just left. Taffer expresses his regret for letting his wife do this and gets ready to face the owner. But I apologize. I've never put you in a situation where you've been touched and offended that way before. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. After a very brief meeting, Taffer realizes that Ambrose is one of the most difficult owners he's ever had to deal with. Think every girl that walks out of here is going to complain? They're just going to leave, right? No, nope, I disagree. Nine out of ten people that don't feel safe, you're a just leave. I'm not going to be this way tomorrow. Paulie is one of the most difficult people I've ever dealt with. But Taffer believes that the pub needs a new theme, concept, and name. The famous rescuer is told by Ambrose, who becomes defensive, that he too can save bars just like him. He even strongly opposed Taffer's suggestion to rename the bar. After 46 years, I don't think so. If he thinks he's changing the name, he's out of his mind. Over my dead body. That is not happening. To assist in the bar and kitchen, Taffer brings in seasoned bartender Michael Tips and chef Eric Greenspan. In the kitchen, the seasoned chef discovers frozen food and canned soups. Ambrose, as usual, refuses to take responsibility for the bar's pathetic condition. While Taffer orders the workers to use baseball bats to smash the soup cans, Ambrose claims that he'll undermine any reforms that Taffer makes. I wanted to play some ball tonight. <laughs> and Paulie, I want you to say goodbye to the old. <laughs> it was really strange to see Ambrose opposing any reformations to enhance his bar. Most owners are pleased to receive free upgrades and equipment, right? After training the staff and replacing the right spouts, Taffer was able to fix the overpouring issue. The fresh additions and modifications were adored by the staff. In the end, Taffer had his way and changed the name of the bar to Canyon Saloon Spirits and Steaks. Ambrose clearly despised the name but loved the decor. He went back to the original name just two months after the show. Even though the bar is still open, there are a lot of mixed reviews about the food. Most patrons seem to enjoy the affordable drinks and the frequent musical performances though. The Canyon Inn has a 2.5 star rating on its Yelp page and most people are confused with the establishment being referred to as an inn when they don't even provide lodging services. For now, Ambrose has managed to keep his bar running. Moving on to the next one being Octane Bar. These changes on the inside, our new menu will train the staff to break down that tension from the kitchen. Octane Bar, situated in Framingham, Massachusetts, was originally called Angry Ham's Garage. The establishment was owned by three people named Tim Hanna, Lyndon L.B. Mayers, and Richie Olson. The pub was incapable of obtaining a liquor license due to Olson and L.B.'s legal issues, and so Hanna was given exclusive possession of the property. I'm not quite sure in my mind that he's demonstrated to me the character required for a license. Due to the proprietor's lack of control, the pub had poor management and irate customers. Despite Taffer telling the owners that they absolutely needed to change in order to succeed, they vehemently refused. Eventually, Taffer was not only able to persuade them to change the name to Octane Bar and Grill, but also remodeled the bar by taking out most of the previous decor. Taffer discovers that the staff was giving away thousands of dollars worth of free alcohol as part of the adjustments, which amounted to a staggering $2,807 in just four days. When the pub had undergone a complete makeover, Hannah and Taffer decided to head to the city council to secure their support. The city officials were very pleased and impressed with the bar's new look. The bar's new concept seemed to really revitalize the business. Just six weeks after the rescue, the sales had increased by more than 25% and the bar was making profits for the first time ever. The bar did, however, have some problems. For instance, during a fight at the pub, the doorman was struck in the head with a rock as he attempted to prevent a drunken person from entering the establishment. Due to this and a few other issues, the bar was shut down for a week. All things considered, it appears like Angry Hams got into some trouble with the local authorities as well. Overall, even though Angry Hams Garage did survive for a considerable amount of time following the bar rescue episode, it closed down in mid-2019. With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. Have you been to any of the bars listed here? Let us know in the comments section down below. Make sure to tell us about any ideas you might have for future videos. We'd love to hear from you. Now, don't forget to give us a like and a share if you enjoyed the content. Be sure to hit the subscribe button with post notifications on to never miss out on our updates. Lastly, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching everyone!